So what are we going to get into today? Let me tell you about Inkbird. They offer smart home products to the global market with three major uh, lines. Smart controllers, food thermometers, and smart sensors. And for us home brewers like us, they have the number one temperature controller brand in the world. That's awesome. Well, today we are going to check out the Eightbird uh, ITC 308 temperature controller. Uh, I want to check out how um, what uses we have for it. Uh, one thing I really want to do, I think a lot of people like to see, is how you set it. And uh, but to be upfront. I'll be honest with you, I've been using it for years, and it's been flawless for me. Alright, so anyway, we're going to check it out and see what's going on. But first, welcome to Stewart's and Brewing. My name is Randy, and this is a channel that's all about home distillation and brewing. Alright, let's get checking out this ink bird. Okay, so let's see what's in the box. Alright, well, first thing I can say is it seems like it's... We got some uh, instructions. Seems like it's packed very well. Hey, let's see. Can't get the twisties undone. Yeah, there we go. Alright, so we got. Um, First thing, we got a nice, pretty good long, I guess, what was that about? Four foot, it seems like four foot long power cord. And then on the, this end, we have this would be your temperature probe. And I think I read on the box that it, it's five foot cord on this temperature probe, so that's pretty nice. Okay, and we'll look at each one. Yeah, there we go. Uh, I did read. All right, so let's see what we got here. Well, we got a dual screen. Uh, first one's SV. That's set value. And PV is perceived value. I think that's what that stands for. And that's what PV is what, uh, what this is reading. Okay. Uh, we have a little light here for heat when it's in heating mode, and we also have another light here for when it is in cooling mode. We'll get to that. Of course, we got a set button and then up and down. So it's not too complicated with buttons, which is a good thing, especially for me. Um, it's got a nice plastic case. Looks pretty sturdy. They put now. This is one thing I really like here uh, is you got these reliefs for all the cords. All the cords have nice reliefs on it and that will help you uh, so we don't get no stress. I think they call them stress reliefs. Anyway. Alright, so now on the plug in here, uh, now this is plug is for the United States which we have as clearly marked one plug for heating and one plug for cooling. We'll get into that in a little bit and of course the power plug. Okay? Alright, so, a couple of things about it, that, which is very important to me because people sell stuff all over the world. Alright, this is, you can have it set for uh, Celsius or Fahrenheit, which that's pretty nice. Um, I think I have an air still that only does Celsius, and I know in the United States we have a hard time with that. But... This one does both, so you're in good shape there. And I said before, you got two screens, so that you, you don't have to flick back between screens. You can always see what your set temperature is versus your perceived temperature, okay, which comes off the probe. Um, it also does also have built within uh, temperature corrections. So if, say that you think this uh, temperature probe is a half a degree off or that's just for saying, let's just say it's a degree off, you could compensate for that being off a little bit. Um, I, like I said, I've been using this for years, I haven't had a problem with that. Another nice thing that this has 
it does have a high temperature alarm and a low temperature alarm. So if something goes wacky, you can uh, you can have an alarm go off if the temperature goes up too high or too low. All right? Great deal. All right. So what else is in the box? Well, the other thing that was in the box was nice set of instructions. Um, it, it seems to be pretty clear. Um, it gives you all the, the fine specs, like the temperature accuracy is plus or minus one degree Celsius or plus or minus two degrees Fahrenheit. That's pretty darn good. A buzzer alarm, like I said, for high and temp lows. Um, let's see what else we got. Alright, got a nice one year warranty on it. Input is 120 volts. All right. So, good deal, good deal. All right, and the direction shows you all the, uh, like I said, all the uh, different parts of it. All right, now here is the tough part. All right, we'll get to this. All right. And I'll tell you what I did is... Just because I know me, I made a copy of these directions and I use, I posted it in my fermentation room just because I know you know you think you have something down pat and then six months from now you say, Well how do you set that? You know, I want to change this, how do you set that? So what I did is I made a copy of the directions and how to set it and I put it into my fermentation room. Just so I would not lose it. Anyway, we're going to get more into that. Okay? So, next question I got. What can it be used for? Well, let me tell you what I use it for first. Okay? And like I said, I think I've had three years, I believe, right around in that area. And I had this many problems. Zero. Okay. So what I do is I got a fermentation room which is about five foot by six foot or somewhere in that neighborhood now maybe seven foot and in within that room I have a small air conditioner and a small electric heater um, so I have my air conditioner plugged into the cooling side here and I have my heating it's just a small small heater you put it plugged into there um, most of the time I have my room set at 75 degrees and the ink bird will decide when to turn the air conditioner on or when to turn the, the heating on. And now, let me show you what I'm talking about. Okay, so if you can see, we are in my fermentation room and here is my ink bird hanging there on the wall. Um, basically my set value is at 74 degrees and right at this present time it is 73.9 degrees okay I got the sensors just hanging here basically off the ceiling so it's kind of like in the middle of the room so I get a pretty darn good average right here you see my air conditioner plugged into the ink bird and I also have down below here's a nice electric heater which is also plugged in to the ink bird um, well, see, I got the door open, so you can see the temperature start to climb just a little bit. All right, so if I leave it open, you'll probably see the air conditioner come on. Uh, like I said, works flawless. That that value, you can you can. It's called a temperature differential, so you kind of decide, you know, how fast will either one comes on. I mean, we'll get we'll get into that. Um, so, it's plugged in there, and that room just stays at one temp within, you know, with, within the parameters I've set. Uh, like I said, it works flawless. I can't complain about that one bit. So that is one option of how you could use it. Uh, I have a friend of mine, he uses his, he has a refrigerator. So inside the refrigerator, he has... Uh, a small heater right and then 
he uses the ink bird. He he likes to lager beer a lot. So what he does is he sets his beer under the lager. Uh, he sets his ink bird, and if it needs to cool, it turns the refrigerator on. If it gets a little bit too cold, it'll turn the heater on, and it just maintains temperature just like it's supposed to work flawless. Okay, uh, let's say you know, you're getting into the fall of the year and uh, your temperature's a little bit on the chilly side but not cold yet. You can take a fermentation bucket uh, and it's easy to do. You can take this temperature probe here to the outside. Right, and you could put a heating band on this, or a um, they have heating pads. You can set these on. You set your inferred to that temperature. Voila, you're going to keep your um, mash that you're firming right to the right temperature. Okay, so that works really, really well too. All right, I mean it, the. It is just endless of different ways that you could use it. Okay, first before we do, uh, we'll, we'll actually set to go through this uh, menu on the unit itself. But uh, first, let's just go through the way it's supposed to be set. It's, okay, how to set. Alright, the first thing you're going to do is hold and press. Press and hold the uh, set button for two seconds. And that's going to get you into the menu. Alright, so the first thing we're going to come up to is the temperature set. Alright, so say that I wanted my uh, temperature in my room to be 75 degrees, I would set 75 degrees there. Then once I do that, you, you, know, you just set up and down. Once you're done, you hit set again. Then you're going to go to the heat differential. Alright, so heat differential is basically, uh, you don't want the unit to be going heat cold, heat cold, heat cold. So you got to give it a little bit of, of room. So once it comes up temperature, then it kind of has a little variance to, to go up a little bit and then it will settle down. And the same thing with cold. And you can set that how much differential you want between the heat and the cold, okay? Same thing with the cold differential, just the other way. All right. And then we're, the next one after the cold differential is the uh, high alarm. So you can set, just like it implies, the, how high and then it'll set the alarm off. Hit set, it moves down to uh, AL, which stands for alarm low. Um, and that's the same thing. Uh, compressor delay is, uh, it gives a, I'm not 100% sure on how this one works. It sets a delay for the compressor on your cooling unit so that it it does not burn up or something like that. You have to read into that one. Uh, temperature calculation. That is so, like I said before, if you need to calculate the uh, the heater probe, if it's off just a little bit. Alright. Then after that is to set it into Celsius or Fahrenheit. That's pretty self-explanatory, so whatever you'd like to use. Alright, then to go back to normal mode, you know, two to five seconds, it's going to go back to normal. Okay, so it is pretty, actually pretty easy. Alright, well, let's actually see what it looks like on, let me plug this thing in. Alright, so right now, it said it's Celsius, okay. All right, let's let's go down and get, for me so I can understand a little bit better. I'm gonna go down to the and change it over to uh, Fahrenheit just because that's what I know. So like I said, you, I just want to hold that for 25 seconds. Oh, you see that the letter popped up, and then I'm gonna just go. Let me go down to CF, which is all right, and then I want to change it so I can go up or down. So I was. We're going to Fahrenheit and I'm going to set it. And then it goes back to normal. Okay, so let's let's start off in the beginning and we're going to go through each one again, just like in where I wrote this down on this piece of paper. 
Okay, so let's go um, right on down the scroll. So first thing we will do is hold the set button. All right, see so yeah, Now I know that looks like ES, but that is actually TS, uh, temperature set. So if we want to go up, so say we want in our room at 75 degrees, all right? So we got that, hit set again, it moves to the next HD, which would be heating differential. Um, so this one is preset at three degrees. So we can change that to where we want. So it'll go three degrees before it turns on to cooling, or it turns on the heating. All right, press set again. Same thing with cooling differential. There's a three degree differential. All right. So we'll hit set again. There's AH alarm high. So right now it's set at 248 degrees Fahrenheit before the alarm would come on, and that's as high as it will go. Okay. So we change that to what we like, we want. So let's say we wanted um, we wanted to be alarm go off when it's 170 degrees. So at, when it reached 170 degrees Fahrenheit, the alarm would sound. All right. So alarm low, they got it set at minus 40. I hope it never gets that cold. But anyway, so you can, like I said, you set it up and down to what you want. Set again, you move to, uh, oop, I waited too long. Alright. Where was I at? I was at alarm low. The next one is uh, compressor delay. I have to read up on uh, presser, compressor delay. Alright. Here's to calibrate your probe. I it set it zero zero, which means leave it's it's good the way it is. All right, and then damn it, if you wait, like I said, too many too long, it, it, but it ain't no big deal. Um, and the last one is going to be. Celsius and Fahrenheit. You just change what you want. Celsius, Fahrenheit. Easy. You can't get much easier than that. And then you key other. And it is, like I said, this is so simple to use, but like, well, like I do, like I leave a chart. I made a copy of that so I wouldn't lose it. And I'm good at losing things. Okay. Got this little demo. All right, so say this. This light's going to represent uh, my cooling appliance. So I'm going to just plug that into cooling. Very simple. And then this one is going to represent um, heating. Plug that in. I guess I got it. Okay. So right now, what it's trying to tell me is the set temperature I have right here is 77 degrees and what this probe is feeling is 69 or 70 degrees right around the back okay so it's turning the heating element on your heating uh, appliance or whatever you're using to heat up okay now I have two bags here one with hot water and one with ice water. So if I take the probe, let's, um, that is, let's put it on, okay, so it's, see that temperature drop, whoops, let me get up underneath there. See that temperature dropping down to the ice water, boom, 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 it, pretty, it, it reacts pretty fast. See it's dropping, so it's trying to turn on the heating element to bring my, um, room back up to temperature. Alright, so let's put it under the the hot bag. Alright, so now we're going to see the temperature is starting to climb. As long as I got that above. Oops, see? See, it turned off the heating and now it's turning on the cooling. Okay? So, depending on where you have your temperature differential or your cooling differential, see I just put it under the ice bag is how fast it will react before it 
changes to the next um, so it's it coming down and as soon as uh, it gets below the 77 it will turn on the the heating element to, see there's a differential there then it clicks over all right that delay that you've seen before it went from one to the other that is your differential and and that is set by you to whatever you think is best all right so that's it's, it's very simple how it works uh, very very simple I'll put it back up under the, the hot bag yep it works very very simple I think it would do it will do the job that it is supposed to do yeah um, okay just shut that off for right now all right like I said it will do the job you want to do depending on what you want and I can only, I mean, there's a lot of other issue or other uh, situations that could work for you, but um, I'm just going after the, the brewing and the distilling world of what it will do, okay? Pros and cons. Well, I think I've already talked about all the pros, um, and there was a number of them. So let's talk about the cons. I'll be honest with you, I really can't find a con. I mean, if I had any cons at all, is I would like the directions just a little bit bigger. Uh, but they're not bad. I mean, if they were just a little bit bigger, it would be easier to read. I do like the directions in the chart, which I got this from. Uh, that is very nice, though. It's uh, really self-explanatory. Uh, I will have to say that the directions are spot on. Uh, the only thing I did not read is about the compressor delay, and you can get into that. It describes it all right there. Uh, so, like I said, I can't really think of any cons. Uh, it does exactly what I wanted it to do. I've been using it for years. And it's done exactly what I wanted. So I, I had to, you know, I have to say that I can't say one bad thing. Uh, all right. Well, this has been a lot of fun. Uh, so if you do need something to uh, control the temperature, like I said, you know, a friend of mine, he uses it for in a refrigerator. And, you know, he uses a full-size refrigerator and a heating you could go like the Home Depot or whatever, get a little ceramic heater put inside. Oh, it, it works great. Uh, so, you can use it for multiple different things. So, I guess the last thing I got to say is, hey, thanks for stopping by. We'll see you next time here on Still Works in Brewing. This has been fun. <laughs>